The vertical tube reactor is an innovative, cost-effective, and controllable method of solving difficult sludge processing and disposal problems. The vertical tube reactor is a below-ground system that uses wet oxidation to convert various wastewaters and sludges to water, carbon dioxide, and a small amount of inert and sterile ash. Since wet oxidation is a chemical rather than a biological process, it is not affected to the same degree by variations of strength and flow of waste. Wet oxidation principles have long been recognized, but until now, the operating costs and technical problems associated with high temperature, high pressure above ground equipment greatly offset the potential benefits. The unique patented design of the vertical tube reactor utilizes the natural laws of thermodynamics within a simple annular heat exchanger enclosed in a conventionally drilled encased vertical well, 5,200 feet deep. Diluted waste liquid flows through the inner annular space of the concentric vertical tubes and returns in the outer annular space. Use of this vertical tube configuration has multiple purposes. The waste stream and injected air flow down the tube and reach a peak natural pressurization of 1,500 pounds per square inch at the bottom due to the height and density of the fluid above. Diameter and length are designed to provide sufficient residence time so that the oxidation reaction can be completed. In addition, the high length to diameter ratio allows extremely efficient counterflow heat exchange and mass transfer. When sufficient air, temperature, pressure, and organic content are present, combustion occurs while waste substances are in a liquid state. During the oxidation process, heat is generated, which may then be recovered. The pumps injecting the wastewater need only overcome wall friction and other minor piping system losses and are not required to supply the high pressures experienced at the bottom of the well. Using this method to convert waste to a sterile ash, a biodegradable liquid, and free carbon dioxide and nitrogen eliminates the additional steps generally associated with the treatment, dewatering, and disposal of sludge. Approximately 45 minutes after the sludge enters the vertical tube reactor, it arrives here fully processed, a frothy, odorless, and sterile effluent. The vertical tube reactor accomplishes 100% destruction of all living organisms and up to 80% reduction of chemical oxygen demand. All this is achieved without the use of above-ground high-pressure reactors or high-temperature, high-pressure pumping and compression. The reacted fluid flows to an air separation tank and then to a settling tank where it is held for approximately half an hour, allowing time for the ash to settle out. The settled particles and froth are then transferred to an ash pit to await disposal. The clarified liquid is returned to the biological process. Utilizing this below ground natural pressure is more cost effective and far safer than above ground mechanical pressurization. All of this can be accomplished in a fraction of the ground space generally needed for conventional systems. The VTR, therefore, has dramatic advantages in locations where land is limited or expensive. This is a highly concentrated sludge, posing a serious threat to the environment. After 45 minutes, VTR technology has converted it to a sterile, harmless ash. Now that we've seen how the treatment process works, let's look at the construction effort. In February 1982, the Environmental Protection Agency published an objective and highly optimistic report on vertical tube reactor technology. So encouraging were their findings that Longmont, Colorado was chosen as a demonstration facility and granted federal assistance for two years to show the technical and economic viability and environmental acceptability of this innovative technology. Construction time of the Longmont vertical tube reactor was 11 months and the treatment facility was online and operational less than six weeks after completion. Construction began with site clearance. Drilling mud pits were installed and the drill rig was brought in and readied for operation. The drilled well would be 5,200 feet deep and 17 and a half inches in diameter.
after the hole was completed, a 13 and 3 8 inch well casing was installed and cemented in place. This provided a conventional cased well in which the VTR reactor was suspended, isolating it from the subsurface strata. With drilling complete, drilling equipment was removed and the site was cleaned and graded. Pipe handling equipment necessary for reactor installation was erected and construction began on the process building. During this time, other process equipment arrived on site, such as reactor pipe in various sizes. A service building was completed for preparing the reactor pipe for installation. As the pipe left the service building, it was lowered by a conventional oil field servicing rig into the well. Pipe joints were automatically welded together and every connection was x-rayed. At the same time, the topside equipment, piping, instruments, and various controls were being installed. All topside equipment was completely tested prior to reactor startup. The design had been based on computer models and was validated with cold water and aerated flow tests. Startup was accomplished by heating the reactor and surrounding formations slowly and progressively until reaching a temperature at which the oxidation process could begin. Sludge from the Longmont treatment plant was then introduced into the reactor and processed. The plant was now operational. The efficiency and cost effectiveness of the vertical tube reactor versus conventional biological treatment can best be shown by comparing post-treatment results. Each week at Longmont, approximately 30 dry tons of solid waste are reduced to two truckloads of dry inert ash. The ash can be used as a filler or recycled in other environmentally acceptable uses. By comparison, the same amount of waste solids treated in one week with conventional biological methods could only be reduced to 22 dry tons of waste solids. And because these solids are not easily separated from liquids, 110 1,500-gallon tank trucks would be required to transport the waste liquids. 165,000 gallons of liquid waste would have to be dumped somewhere off-site, requiring over 200 man-hours of additional labor. Balancing today's growing environmental concern with the increasing demand for waste treatment requires advanced technology and professional commitment. We have the answer. The vertical tube reactor. Technology that provides a safe, efficient, and cost-effective solution to sludge.